Let us go to our man Simon Doyle, who's actually in the Caribbean at the moment. He's calling. He's CPL. Dooley, before we do everything else, we've spoken to Ken Laban. We've spoken with Craig Cumming. And I know the same, mate, you joined us on Radio Sport to start with. You started doing the commentaries. You and me met during the cricket, I remember, on TV3. Willie Lorce is one of ours. And what a sad, sad loss, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Thoughts with Willie's uh, family, friends, and um, you know all the colleagues and, and people that he's worked with over a, a number of years. And I uh, just cheering a commentary box tonight with Danny Morrison and Willie actually called Jacob's first game when he had his first run on for Southland uh, just a few weeks ago. Jacob Morrison, Danny's uh, boy, of course, and um, Willie was was calling that game and um, he messaged Danny and they'd been exchanging a few messages and you know Willie had spoken to Jacob as well before he uh, he made his debut. So. Yeah, really. Um, another one, another one gone, mate. Another one mm. gone too soon. Way and too um, soon. as I say, thoughts with uh, family, friends, and and all those who uh, who knew Willie. Look, all of us who do these jobs, people. The other thing about it, I know that you know we do have the most privileged lives here, are because we get paid to talk about sport. But let me tell you that I know it's. It, I'm not saying it's hard work because. A lot of people have a lot harder jobs to do than us, Dooley. But at the same time, we all put a lot of prep into it. We all put a lot of care into it. We all put a lot of love into it. And that's what, you know, I remember with, with Willie, no one could butcher language like he could, mate. And he did it with a smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're thinking the same, mate. I used did to love what? working with him, mate. Oh, mate. It was unbelievable, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, there were words that were invented <laughs> that um, the, the thesaurus or the English language could never have coped with. That's it. Um, <laughs> But it was, uh, but it was, it was just Willie, wasn't it? It was just his way, and um, you know, he forged a terrific career. Yes. He ended up doing, um, you know, did the sevens for, for for many, many years, didn't he? The seven circuit, and um, everywhere he everywhere he went, the old we used to call him. What, what was it? His chest came around the corner before anything else, <laughs> didn't it? He sort of stuck that chest, stuck that massive chest out. That was the chest, first, thing, first thing you saw of his. If you saw a chest come through the door, you knew it was Willie you know, two seconds before his head popped around That's the it. corner. Yeah, the big head, the big <laughs> mo. And also, you know, to be fair to him, there is, you know, a reasonable reasonable way to bat downstairs too that actually appeared quite often before the rest of him. <laughs> I know, I'm just saying, I'm paying a compliment here is what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, he's look, he's just a lovable rogue of a guy and uh, and just, yeah, a, absolutely. you know, really missed as a, as a character and a broadcaster. Simon, tell us about the CPL, mate. What you doing? Um, yeah, we just arrived in uh, St. Lucia, obviously. The first round, that this um, St. Kitts and Nevis saw the 60, uh, so which was a new comp and a women's CPL kickoff as well. So um, great news for the women's game in the Caribbean. Um, the first uh, six days, seven days was in St. Kitts and Nevis. So it saw the CPL kind of proper start for the men, and now it continues for the next three weeks here in St. Lucia. Then we go to uh, Trinidad and then on to Guyana for the last week and for the finals and the playoffs. So um, great that they've got a women's comp up and running. It lasted, um, it was only for the first week in St. Kitts, but um, yeah, it was great to see that sort of start this year. We'll get a women's IPL up and running as of next year. So, you know, the, the, the women will have pretty much four very, very good tournaments to choose from in the next sort of two years when you look at the uh, the Big Bash across the Tasman paying really good money, the IPL paying really good money, the 100 mm. in England paying really good money, and the CPL will have a very good women's comp. So you're going to have um, you know a lot of options for, for, for women around the world to play cricket. Um, and it's a stepping stone as well, Marty. You think about the talent, and we I think about the talent in New Zealand, and, um, you know, forgive me for sort of perhaps not using the correct words, but the Polynesian and Māori and, and Pacific sort of people of New Zealand. I, I look at that in a, from a woman's point of view and a men's point of view and wonder why yeah, there are not yeah, more of them playing yeah, cricket. You yeah. know, I mean, they are athletes. And when yeah. I think about the Caribbean, I think athletes. And and if they can really source the young girls in particular now at the age of 12, 13, 14, who are genuine athletes already or, or have athletic ability, they have years time. Some of these girls around the world are going to be making four, five, six hundred thousand yeah, US dollars coin, a year yep. playing cricket. Yep. Now you cannot be playing. You, you know, if you play for the Jamaican netball side, you might make fifty. Yeah, that's but right. If you play for the Jamaican women's cricket team and are very good, you can go around the world. Okay, we keep. We could just that can be a pathway. Yeah. And Sorry. something out of it, you know? Okay, there's this, we, we just lost you a little bit. So this CPL, this uh, um, Caribbean Premier League that you're playing, what kind of players has it, it uh, attracted? 
Um, well, Fuff Duplessis is captain in the uh, side tonight. So, um, Scotty Kugelein is here. You've got the um, mm-hmm. likes of uh, Chris Green, um, Imad Wazim, Muhammad Amir. Um, you know, so there's some very good overseas players um, in amongst all of the teams. They've got a, a really nice new rule in the tournament this year, Marty, that if you play an under-22 player, so an emerging talent from uh, the Caribbean on your side, you're allowed to play five overseas for the first five games as long as your under-19 or under-20 player is playing. Brilliant. So that's nice. It's encouraging them to play, to bring the young guys through as well. Um, and we had a couple of cracking games today. The Barbados uh, Royals were... Were brilliant today. Um, Tim Seifert's here for the TKR boys. They were they were absolutely pants this morning by the Barbados Royals. And we had a, um, a, a second to last ball finish tonight with Scotty Kugelin finishing things off with the bat for um, for the for the home side, the St Lucia Kings over the Jamaican Talawas. So okay. still all the big names of the Caribbean playing. Um, you know the, the Gales and the Pollards and the Russells and those sorts of guys are all still playing. Trump them with probably the, the next tier down of, of international quality sure. players, I would say, without being too rude. Okay. Nine to the hour, it is Simon Doyle is with us. You know, just looking at your Instagram, not that I do, but these photos just keep appearing on my thing and I keep trying. I don't know how to get them off my phone, but when you're sitting there poolside with 32 degrees, I'm just sitting there going, dude, have you? when's the last time you did a winter? Uh, no, I, I well, I, the, only, the last winter I did, Marty, was um, COVID. When, when we, just oh, before course. I left New Zealand, actually, right. for good, um, was, was the last winter I did. So that was the, the 19 winter, wasn't it, I think? Was it 19? I can't even when COVID was. 2020, bro. Uh, yeah, it must have been the 19 winter. 2020, was it? Okay, sorry. Yeah. The 2020 winter um, was the one I did at home. And, um, yeah, I was, I was washing windows and, uh, and cleaning houses for, for the winter, doing a, a, a hard day's work like most people back home do. We got another uh, one day today, Chapel Hadley, mate. And look, I mean, you know, I'm, I, I know that you, and I just talked to Cumming about it as well, mate. That, I mean, this means so much to me. It means so much to me because of those names and because we grew up watching those names, um, you know. And and I, it's just, I just want this thing to go to a decider. I don't want it to fizzle out at all. Are you able to see it? And did you watch much of the first one? I didn't actually see it. I've only seen the highlights of the first one. Um, obviously, saw the scorecard when we had them in all sorts of trouble at forty-four. Four I think five. it was for five yeah. or around about that area, yeah. um, and and should have you know should have crushed them then. I mean, yeah. Look, it, it's a hard one to to sort of put your finger on why, but you don't need when you when you didn't have a big score on the on the board. You use your resources, even if you've bowled Trent Bolt out before the thirtieth over. It actually doesn't matter. Well, we've got to bowl them all out. out the only way we're winning over. it is to bowl them out, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It, it actually doesn't matter. You know, you've got other resources, even though they might not be as capable or quite as good. You do have other resources, so we should have really put the foot on the throat at five down, and we didn't. We let them get away, and then that Green Kerry partnership just sort of killed us. And you just felt as soon as they sort of put. 60 or 70 on you kind of felt the writing was on yeah. the wall i think yeah. and and it was unfortunately all right then um i know that uh, even though you're in a far-flung part of the world that you're still able to keep pace with the champions league scores and uh well if they sack thomas tugel for a one nil loss to dynamo zagreb i mean obviously klopp's <laughs> lost the changing room and he's lost the plot hasn't he he's 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 gone, isn't he? He's gone. I mean, I'm just reading a, a, a thing today where um, he says we have to reinvent ourselves. Maybe this is a season that Liverpool need to write off. Well, after being so good for, for three seasons, it's a tough one to take if it's, um, you know, a couple of changes and a couple of minor changes. It means a write-off of a season. So, I, I look, I mean, I don't think he's going anywhere. Klopp, I think they um, they love him. I, I think he's a very, very good manager. And I think, you know, we've, we've talked in the past that... He, He's up there in the top two, three managers in the world at yep. the moment. Even yep. if, he, if he had to go, I think he'd get some fairly large offers around the world. So um, I was surprised to see Tuchel go, to be honest. Uh, I mean, he's got a decent record this year. They haven't played poorly. But those the, the, those owners, and when you look at what, you know, the, obviously Abramovich before, and, and you look at the new owners, and they're just ruthless. Yep. They've gone through some high-quality managers in the last 10, 15 years, haven't they? When you look at the names that they've gone through, it's been quite incredible. Well, you actually, look, look, look at since Abramovich started. I think they've had a manager every 18 months or something insane. And it's not like they, this is mm. a team that hasn't had success. They've won four or five titles in that time. They've won no. two Champions League. Two Champions Leagues. I mean, that's two more than you have, Man City. Yeah. You know, that's actually really significant. Ex- ex- <laughs> and last year, okay, they got burgled by Real Madrid exactly. like everyone else did. But look, I mean, you, you, we sit here with our sport and, you know, 
And I, look, I suppose it's actually a nice thing about New Zealand is we is we aren't like that. Like, remember when Warren Gatlin didn't win a single game for the Chiefs? I mean, if, the, if you go 0-8 in any competition in the world, you're gone, Burger, mate, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's... I mean, we've talked about this as well, Marty, haven't we? I, I don't know that... Look, I'm not sure that this is the height of professionalism or, or this is this sort of signals professionalism from, you know, from Chelsea, but we haven't still properly grasped professional sport. You know, walking into a locker room, your bags are packed. Sorry, mate, you've been shipped from Minnesota. You're actually going to Boston. Yeah. Um, here's your papers. They'll, they'll take it. You know, we, we have never quite grasped. We still get guys saying, oh, I don't want to move out of Canterbury. I, I, I want to play here and I, I don't want to go to Auckland, so I'm not going to go. Uh, you know, we, we haven't quite grasped the whole the whole concept of absolute professional sport. It is ruthless. It is a ruthless, multi, multi-billion dollar business around the world in most parts of the world. Yeah. We haven't quite cottoned onto that. You think about those American sports, you think about football in particular, and, and that's what it's like. You know, you're sold, you're gone. See you later. We've, we've got rid of you. Barcelona have bought you or, or Leeds have bought you. Mm. It just it happens every week. All right. Well, look, uh, thank you so much for staying up late. Um, pour a glass and raise it to the roof for our mate, okay? I will do for you. Yeah, we'll have one for Willie tonight. Thanks, brother. Okay. Nice talking to you as always, Dolly.